D3 systems of units. Now, the main one is the international system, the metric system, which we write SI because in French, pardon my French here, if I don't pronounce this correctly, but système international de unité. In other words, the international system of units. So système international, system comes first. So we say the SI, the SI system of units. And we will use F equals MA to help us guide us here. Now, when you use dimensional analysis, for example, they use this bracket, for example, if you want the dimensions of, say, velocity, that's going to be length per time. In other words, the big three, your length, your time, and your mass. So this is independent of units, like just say a length, a time, and a mass. And we're gonna look at specific, at specific units in this section. So for example, the dimensions of distance would be a length. The dimensions of X is a length. So using F equals MA as a guide, I'm gonna say the force, and I'll put in print, I'm gonna put in parentheses, well, let me just go do it like this. I'll put F, equal, F equals MA, and I'll say in the international system of units, the acceleration is meters per second squared. Don't be confused that this M is different than that M. That M is a physical quantity mass, and this M is a unit, meters. And then here is the kilogram, and then this force is named after Newton. And now when and now when we spell it out, we're gonna usually spell out here, we use a lowercase, Newton. So this is coming from F equals MA and the definition, see, so the definition of the Newton, the Newton is by definition one kilogram, one meters per second squared when you put in one, so you can write the unit as a compound unit based on these other units, there it is. So we have the Newton as a kilogram meter per second squared. In other words, the units for, say, force can be broken down as a mass and a length over time squared like that. This is also called the MKS system because the M is going to stand for meter. This stands for meter. K stands for kilogram. And S stands for second. So they're giving the big three length, time, and mass. So what they're doing is the order they're using is they're putting the length first, the meter, and they're putting the mass second, kilogram, and the time last. Now see that M, a lot of M's being used here, just have to look at the context. This MKS means meters, kilograms, and seconds. And they capitalize it when they do it like that. Now the other system here, which is still kind of a metric system, is the one we can call the centimeter gram second. Say cm g for gram and as per second. Now if we do that and set up Newton's law F equals MA. Then if we use, say, the gram for the mass, and this is going to be centimeters per
per second squared, because the centimeter, then by definition, when everything's one, this is a dyne. So we can write down that a dyne is equal to a gram times centimeter per second squared. Now it's very easy to convert those, and we're gonna do those in a second. We'll do, we'll do conversions later. And then the last system here, say British engineering system, and the US system is derived from the British system. The customary system we're using the US, which we should be changing, say B, E. Here, if you have F equals MA, they're using feet per second squared for the acceleration. The force is given in pounds and the mass is the slug. So that's the British system, say. I made a little chart here in the book for you. A lot of tables, the MKS, CGS, and the British system. We have the length, the time, and the mass. And I have listed here what they are and given abbreviations. No abbreviation for slug. Then when you use Newton's second law, you put the force in there. I have a little summary of what we're talking about. The next step though is the conversion, how to do conversions. But before we do that, here's a neat little summary. F equals MA in the MKS system, you have Newtons, you have kilogram, meters per second squared. In the CGS system, you have the dyne, you have the gram, centimeters per second squared. Remember that the Newton and the dyne and the pound are all defined respectively when you use F equals MA with one. One is everywhere. And then here in the British system, the pound is equal to the slug times feet per second squared. Okay, the easiest one to convert is the Newton and the dyne because see, for the Newton, you have one Newton is equal to one kilogram times one meter per second squared. But the kilogram is a thousand grams. The meter is a hundred centimeters. Second stays the same. And you have a hundred thousand gram centimeter per second, but see, look at this, a second squared, but second squared. So here, the gram centimeter per second squared is the dime. So we got it. One Newton is equal to 100,000 or 10 to the fifth dimes. And you want to write the conversion going the other way. One dyne is 10 to the minus fifth Newtons. And you can spell these out if you want. D-Y-N-E. And then here, Newton. Now the British one, British one's tricky. And my favorite way is to use something we already covered in our class, and that is we said that 1.0 kilogram weight is equal to 2.2 pounds. Uh, notice we put weight in there with the kilogram because kilogram is mass, not force. So sometimes people will say kilogram force or kilogram weight, and what that means is the force of one kilogram on the Earth at Earth's surface, which is 2.2 pounds, so it's, it's due to the gravity. Now, to be a little more precise with the conversion, we will go with six significant figures. This would be 1.00000 kilogram weight 
equals 2.2046 62 pounds. Now the force in newtons for a kilogram, that's gonna be given by Newton's law, where we have G due to gravity, and we're gonna put one kilogram in. But now the problem is what do you use for G? Because G, we said, varies a little bit from different places on the Earth. Now that's not good for a strict conversion rule, we need to have a G that we agree on to use. And there is one. There is a standard value given that has been agreed upon for such purposes. And that G is 9.80665 meters per second squared. Now you can see why some textbooks we'll write this as 9.81. And you can do that. That's the standard value. However, I like to use for the standard value 9.8, two significant figures. After all, we showed that in Asheville, North Carolina, using the table that is given by the, the government site, that I talked about is 9.79 meters per second squared. But we will use this one for the conversion. So that means that the Newton, that's gonna be equivalent to this, in other words, the, the, the kilogram weight, when you put the kilogram in and you put the G in for this, you get F is 9.80, 665 newtons. When well, you just plug that in here for the one kilogram, that's what you're going to get. And then now you have the connection. The connection is that this is going to be the same as 2.20462 pounds. So that's the conversion. So you can you know, divide both sides when you set this up, this equation 2.20462 pounds equals 9.80665 newtons. You can now divide both sides of the equation by this 2.20462 and get one pound equals when you divide that out, you'll get 4.4. .4. And I'm gonna round this off now to three significant figures. You get this conversion. And then if you were to divide both sides by 9.80665 to free up the Newton, you would get one Newton is equal to the three significant figures, 0.225. Pounds. See, that's almost 10, so you divide and you get 0.2. So there you go. That's the conversion. Well, one more to go, and that's the slug. Let's get the slug in there. So for the slug, what we're going to need to do is find the accurate value for G in the British system. So if you have G as agreed upon, 9.80665, meters per second squared, then what we're going to do is multiply by a conversion to get feet. And if you want, say, six-digit accuracy here on the conversion, you need 3.28084 feet to get you one meter. So when you do that, you're gonna get 32.1740 feet per second squared. That's G. So now here are the several steps to work this out. If I wanna relate F equals MA to the British system, where I put in one for everything, I'll get that the pound 
is equal to the slug times feet per second squared. You know, put in one for the acceleration, one feet, foot per second squared, one slug gets you one pound. Now, if I solve for the slug, I get one pound over feet per second squared. And that's one slug. Solving for the slug here, get pound over feet per second squared. But now I can use the conversion for the pound, which I figured out up here to bring in Newtons. And if I do that and keep uh, the accuracy, 4.44823 Newtons over feet per second squared. And now I can write out, the next step is to write out for the Newton. Newton is kilogram meter per second squared. See, that is what a Newton is. So if I do that, 4.44823, don't you like dimensional analysis? Well, you know, it's not, not like hard equations like we did earlier with trajectory, but it's a little tedious stuff to work out. Dimensional analysis. So there is, you know, there is your Newtons being substituted. And then you have here feet per second squared. You know, if you want, you could put a one in front there. It doesn't hurt. But now I need to, I'm almost there. I want the slug in terms of the kilogram. I'm almost there. I need to get rid of this meter. So the way to get rid of the meter is we're going to use multiply by 3.28084 feet per one meter. So when we multiply, or you can just think of putting that factor in here, that's, you know, unity. This is unity. That'll kill the meters and get you feet but then everything's gonna cancel out except the kilograms. So when you do that, you'll get one slug. You know, 3.2 times 4.4, it's gonna be like 14.15. So you actually get here 14, when you work that out, 0.594 kilograms. So there's your conversion, mass to a mass. So if you want to go with two stiff, uh, let's say, let's go with three stiff figures, then one slug is equal to 14.6 kilograms. There we go. And if you want to then divide by the 14.6, you know, to get the kilogram, you would get 0 0.0685 slugs like that.